Introducing Evan Carver. <laughs> I promised you we are going to give you exactly what you need. We are here for you. We are here to make sure that uh, that Calico product that you designed uh, to, to try, that you have all the nuances of knowledge um, available to you. Who am I? Um, that's my name. What do I do? I've been a hairdresser for like 20 years. Um, I've been with a bunch of different manufacturers. Um, but I like to believe that I am a, a hairdresser. I mean, a hairdresser because they fall in love with what hairdressers stand for, what hairdressers can do in terms of impacting their communities in a positive way. Um, so I try to partner with brands that really stand for something and the hook chains that we need in this industry. But I'm not doing it alone. I am joined by my friend, Mr. Larry King. Hi, everybody. This is a salon owner. My salon menu and books felt dormant. Felt stale, felt like it needed something. Um, we're a great color salon, 60% of our clients get color, but there was just something missing. And this is what sparked me some light in our menu because we can now impart put it on here in a fraction of the time with incredible shine, and the entire room doesn't smell when it's done. And you're gonna you're gonna see that today. It's just an amazing process. Cali Curl has liquid um, patented liquid technologies. Um, we this is a thio-based oil. You're going to see this a number of times. Up there. We want you to understand that this is a thio-based oil. We have liquid technology that in uh, two different bond generators that we've had within the activator and the neutralizer, and also um, as a post-treatment. Um, it's amazing that it is able to impart shine, condition, and more importantly, and or as importantly. There's limited odor. Um, we're going to do the service and you're going to be amazed at how, how much it doesn't smell. It's a professional salon texture service. Um, at my salon in, in Chicago, about 43% of our clientele are women of color. So we have a separate texture menu uh, and we've got texture training and uh, people who have passed go through texture training and call them experts. So we've got that. Um, that responsibility for our clientele, but also this app actually adds a whole new service for people that want textured in here. Um, patent waiting tools and technology, and liquid technology, you're going to see some rings that we use that are super cool. You can play with those a little bit later. Um, and again, minimal malodor. Uh, malodor is, is a, an invasive term, um, it's, it's odor. Um, when you get done here, that couple of mannequins that we did in the previous session, you go to smell those mannequins. And there's an odor there, but it's pleasant. Um, we have, you can't say there's no odor because there is a smell, but it's just, it just smells great. The Beach Wave system, we've got an incredible amount of products that support that as well. Um, we've got small rings that are good for shorter hair. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about each one of the rings in, in the consultation and what you're going to use those rings for. Um, Today, you're going to see us use the special edition rings that will come in your kit right now because we want you to be able to see the hair in there. It gives you an opportunity to look at it and see it. Um, but these are the colors that will be coming out, uh, out in the future. Um, but the medium ring is probably going to be your favorite. It's, it's certainly the one that we use more often than anything. Uh, the medium plus is the same diameter just deeper, so you can use it on longer hair. And then there's the large rings, which we use to really impart a lot of weight to it, a lot of body. You're going to get a lot of grip when it comes to styling hair when you use a, a larger ring. The Beachway system contains a patent pending waving lotion with minimal malodor. We've been able to do some things that really reduce the, the odor molecule in, in the uh, solution. Uh, and by adding our bond generator to it, it makes it softer, it makes it shiny, and again, minimal uh, odor. Um, the bond repair technologies, both in bond generators, there's two packets of those, one for the solution, one for the, or one for the activator, one for the neutralizer. Then there's a larger packet for um, condition treatment called the bond extender that we do at the end of the service. I will say just a, a, a little side note uh, to the malodor. This, right here is going to be both where we would be like working at the workstation then because the shampoo basin is there and can do a lot of the processing stuff right here so that 
that's why there's plastic on the floor. Normally the the excess product goes down the drain. But even when it was just sitting here in the open, people in this row were like, I can't even smell it. It was just sitting there. So it dissipated really quickly. They could felt the smell when it first came out, but then dissipated. And every time we've done this in a salon where we've been prepping models, the salon owner didn't know what we were testing. So it's mm -hmm. like if anybody existed in the day of bio-based permeating, um, they remember that smell definitely. We knew what somebody was doing that in the salon, it's a simple salon that might smell like that today. Um, and the client has been here for two days after when that she was allowed to wash her hair. <laughs> and we wash her hair the same way. So she's there's no smell in there. No smell in there. We are actually we are no uh, smell in the air. No smell in the air. There you go. <laughs> we are uh, by nature we developed during the COVID during the pandemic where by nature a, a web-based and virtual education. But as we had to pivot for most of us had to pivot during the pandemic, we're pivoting back to um, offering in salon education and some training. So, but our, our website is incredibly robust. Um, we've got a learn page that teaches downloadable instructions. It's got a video um, integrated with um, various features and instructions. We got a customized page where we've taken those two models that we saw up here. We got them, we got every model that we've done that's in any type of our advertising. Then we're going to be soliciting your results from the ring patterns that you develop and the results that you have to do, you develop so that we can start posting your work as well. We also have a, a very robust um, frequently asked questions, uh, many of which you're going to hear today, whether it's on Zoom or you, you have some questions today. So I want to prep for a service. You're going to want your beach wave kit. You're going to want your Cali Pearl rings. We're going to talk about which ones you want to choose during the consultation process. Uh, the foam diffuser rings, we'll talk about those as well. A fine tooth comb and a white tooth comb. Bond therapy mask, we'll talk about when to use that. And um, shears if you're going to cut the hair before or after. And then a spray bottle. You know what I know is most of them are section clips. Session clips. Yeah. I usually have them clipped on here. They're on our station. <laughs> so prepping the client's hair, um, you're going to go through with either hydrating or cleansing shampoo. The majority of your clients are going to use hydrating shampoo because the majority of your clients are going to have some type of porosity in their hair. Usually if you've got straight, virgin, um, unadulterated hair, you can use a cleansing shampoo. If you've got resistant hair, you can leave that cleansing shampoo on a couple more minutes and then we'll use it for a little bit more. But again, the majority of the time you're going to end up using hydrating shampoo. When Jackie comes out, you know, and we'll go through that consultation as well. Um, again, I want to reiterate this is a bio based way. It has bond therapy technology that can help to um, uh, add shine, add condition, and buffer some of the. Um, ingredient in the, in the bio. Um, you've got client has color treated hair. You should do color treatments two weeks before or two weeks after if it's a permanent hair color. Um, you're not going to see a color shift on permanent color, but again, because of the porosity and the condition of the hair, you want to you wait either two weeks before or two weeks after. Um, when you do this on semi and demi color, because there's no active ingredient that blocks that curl and that color in the hair, you may get color shift in the semi um, <laughs> Metallic dyes. Be fearful of metallic dyes. I, I haven't heard of them in a long time. But products like Grecian Formula just don't mix with any kind of other chemicals. So um, make sure you ask about metallic dyes. The length of hair will make a difference on what ring size you use and sectioning you use. Uh, the density of the hair will, make, will also play into the size of the ring you're going to use. Uh, the hair texture. Uh, again, porosity, uh, whether there's curl to it, how well it takes to curl, and we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, don't perform the service on the next day. You just, you just don't. It, it doesn't do well with any kind of a relaxer. Um, be very considerate of previous chemical services. Go back three or four months and find out what they've done to their hair, whether it's in permanent color, semi-permanent color, any kind of um, uh, smoothing system, 
This can be done on smoothing systems, and we'll talk a little bit more about that as well. Um, key things to talk about and to really look at are the porosity of the hair, what kind of damage there is, um, any kind of medic, uh, the integrity of the hair is incredibly important because you really want to either make it, keep it as well as, as healthy as it is or make it a little bit better. Um, medications, we all know that thyroid medication, um, aspirin is evident in the hair really, really quickly. You want to make sure that you talk to them about their medications. Um, consider when to do a cut before or after. Um, I prefer to cut before, um, but it's, it's really up to you. We've got, um, remember the 50-50 the rule? 50% of, of, of the success of this is the client's hair and the health of their hair, and 50% is your expertise using the right products, using the right um, uh, sectioning, the right ring size, and the right process design. Um, and practice. We always recommend doing this on a mannequin, doing a couple of mannequins ahead of time to get used to sectioning, twisting. Very, very intuitive, but there are some specifics that we'll talk about as the end does this today. Um, and then more importantly, the, the process of time. So she's going to come out right now with her hair already shampooed. But you guys can see, we're going to talk to her before, but you don't see right here, Jen. Important thing to note, does she have straight hair? No. No, okay. So let's go through the consultation. The first one's for me. Am I comfortable? with my client's current hair health? And am I comfortable with my experience with Calico? So in other words, like, does her hair already scare you? Are you intimidated by it because it's like highlighted too heavily? Like you're like, I'm worried that this might be too damaged. I don't know. So maybe you need to practice it a couple of times to see what it's done. Like sometimes practicing and intentionally like doing something so you know what it looks like when it's not right. But like practicing on a mannequin with the actual solution so you recognize what it looks like when it is ready. And you can uh, have a couple of moments where you're like, okay, now I think it's ready. But it's before the time it looks like it's ready. You can take it off and trust yourself. That way you, um, you know what you're looking for. And then trying your first human as a low risk candidate. So something that's not a double process form. Maybe that's just in like color treated or even like you can find the unicorn virgin hair out there. It gives you more time to process to look for that higher the porosity, the faster the process goes. Okay, so if you said yes, you're confident with her hair and you're confident with your skills, then let's go for it. So the question is, is the client, is my client highly lifted blonde? No. no. Is her hair compromised or is it, does it need a trim or is it very unhealthy? Um, she does need a trim um, and I will go ahead and trim it afterwards um, because I want to get right to it. Um, but normally I like to trim before as well, but we ran over the last class, so I want to stay on track and then I can cut her out. Um, I better get ready to do that. Have you guys watched me? Um, so then, if if the, and the reason if you see split ends, those split ends, this this service will swell all of the hair. So hair that's already split open, if it swells, it like swells more, right? And then the split looks. That's guaranteed to overprocess. And then it looks like the fried ends of her hair when really they were already there. You just tell them to singe them. <laughs> singe is a bad word. Explode them. Um, so just make sure you have nice clean ends to start with. Uh, okay. When using a curling iron, this is for you. How long does your curl last? A long time, probably, right? Yeah. Yeah, because she has naturally wavy hair. Now, if she didn't, what does that tell us about her hair? It can either be so naturally thin straight that it's like coarse or it's like thin and it all it is, but it doesn't have any natural texture whatsoever and it just doesn't work. So it can be considered resistant, but there are some people who like highlight their hair 
And so if it is resistant because it's virgin or because it's like the dark hair that has been bleached, but just no matter what, their hair is just heavy or doesn't want to hold curl, um, then you might want to look at our cleansing shampoo, which is essentially like a lighter version of like a clarifier. Uh, but it's lighter, it's just made to like open the fuel so it's ready to receive it a little bit quicker. Um, and then the other option is for anybody that has like color treated or chemically treated hair, and that's our hydrating shampoo. So she's been shampooed with our hydrating shampoo, and that's it as well. Um, so then you'll get that. And then when the curling iron question, so that tells you, you can ask her, you'll see her beforehand, but like some people, they're so used to just flat ironing their hair because it's really even. Like a lot of our clients, they have like a little natural wave in the back because they don't color that hair or highlight it as much. And then the front, it's not even anymore because we've lightened it and then they flat iron it or they curl in there. So like the curl's uneven because it's been kind of manipulated elasticity. So the good thing about the Cali curl is like right now she has wavy hair in some places that looks a lot like our Cali curl pattern, um, but it's uneven. So the fun part for me is to select the right diameter of the section and the right ring size to try to match or even out her texture between the curls. That's a really cool thing for people to like want to wear their hair wavy, but they can't because it's not good. Um, so when was your last chemical service? Like color or a straightener or anything like that? Color about five weeks ago. Color about five weeks ago. I could tell when she showed me her roots. So she does like a permanent hair color root because I can see that it's lift, it lifts a little bit. Um, and then she told me, but like, what does she, I'll ask her like in front of you guys. So when she does your color, does she pull like a gloss type of color through your ends or does she like pull a permanent color through your ends? They do a gloss through the right. ends. So like any good hairdresser, you know, she's not pulling permanent color through her ends. Now the good and the bad is that because the way that this works is it swells, is the bonds can change. Any swelling, permanent hair color molecules are driven in deep within uh, an actuator, like a, a generator, right? Like a, our volume for hours. Um, but lots of demis and all of semi permanent colors, like glosses, um, are just sitting on the surface layer. So once you swell it, there can be a color shift. So I had to ask her, are you okay if the color shifts a little bit, mm -hmm. knowing that in two weeks you can get it colored and glazed over? Yeah. Yeah. She, in fact, her colors here. And it was like, actually, I wouldn't mind seeing it a little bit lighter if it happened. So if she's okay with it, her colors is like, that'd be great. So win win. Um, but that's, that can happen just so you know. So then, uh, can we relax there? No. Um, other variables to consider are you an avid swimmer? No. And so you're not in chlorine a lot, I'm guessing. No. <laughs> and then do you have hard water at your house? No. Okay. Perfect. Um, so you just want to use, we're going to exercise caution when we're using like heavily highlighted hair, right? So that's going to be the last thing that you see on here is just, just like how many of you guys make a lot of your money from color in the salon? So a lot of these questions are similar to questions that you would ask when you're trying to form. You need to get down to like, when was the last time you filled it? Like when, like before that, like these ends are long. Like what did you ever do to your hair? Tell me like what's underneath there. And don't lie to me because it's going to affect what happens. <laughs> so tell me the truth because it's going to show up. The only difference with formulating this is that when you change a formulation, you change the colors according to what's going on, right? You make them more sheer, translucent, demi, semi, permanent, but the timings never change. In this, we have the same product, different ring sizes give you a different result, and different timings give you a different result. Make sense? So you still are formulating based on what you have here, but now we're going to tell you how you choose the size of the section, the size of the ring, and how you choose the timing. Okay, and that'll be how we go about it. So okay. then we go into setting up the tray. Right? So we're going to determine together the ring size. Do you want to walk us through it? And I'll just kind of like I, I'm figuring it out right now. Yeah, but but I think the um. 
as you look at the ring size, um, before you get to the ring size, section size. Um, the section size is going to determine the right left kick you have in the in curl. Um, I'm going to got a mannequin here that I'll show you that is, um, shows you what a larger section will determine versus a smaller section, and also show you the difference in how you twist the hair, whether it's loose or tight. And with this mannequin, what we did was we split her in sections. The right side is a tighter twist and the left side is a looser twist. And this section here, when you twist it, diameter is about a quarter of an inch. This is a half an inch. And this is seven eighths of an inch. And when you look at, you show that you know? yeah, so when you look at the amount of curl, you get with a firmer twist versus that side. You can, it's, it's noticeable that when you twist it and you see the end or twist the hair, it's firm and firm enough that it doesn't buckle. So your section size is going to make a big difference. You're going to have a looser wave when you take a tiny section. You're going to have a more dense wave when you take a, a larger section. Now, if her hair was really, really thick, I could take this into two sections and use the same ring and get the same one. Okay. Does that make sense as far as the difference you can see between your section diameter and how tightly you wrap it, how tightly you twist it? And I'm going to go through that in a few minutes. Yep. So I have decided that I'm going to do six small rings. So it's a classic Kelly curl, we call it a classic beach wave. Any, anything that's four to six rings is gonna give you that classic beach wave size shape. And they're all gonna be wrapped away from the base. And what I wanna do is, as I'm checking, is like even diameter of your ponytail, even size ponytail equals even size waves. So instead of, matching up like at the top of the year when I'm going to do this in like quadrants basically <laughs> two on each side and then two on the top two on the left on the bottom so I'm just making sure that when I hold these at the ponytail base this is where we're talking about that section being a quarter of an inch to a half an inch he's going to get a, a more dense curl when you use a thicker section even better when you close your eyes <laughs> You can feel it instead of visually trying to see which one looks bigger. You'll spend more time sectioning it than actually twisting it and putting it in place. Once you, the first time I did this, um, it probably took me 10 minutes to section it so that I knew all the sections were pretty equal. Cool. Uh, the first time I did six rings, it took me 12 minutes. The second time I did it, it took me seven. That's how quickly it goes. It's incredibly intuitive. It's stuff we learned in beauty school. Yeah, you'll get fast quick. You'll get fast, fast. Your ring size you're going to base on the hair length. Uh, it's also going to give you the vertical kick to it. We'll show you that in a couple of slides. Um, it also determines how well the curls cascade. Um, and a pro tip for fine hair. Um, fine hair will have a tendency to not be able to hold the weight of the ring um, if it's really fine hair, if it's a thin section, it's a quarter in section. What we've done is you take the foam diffuser ring, which is what twists the hair, take the foam diffuser ring, put it in the bottom of the ring, then you put the hair coiled in there, and then you put another foam, foam diffuser ring over it. It gives you a little more cushion inside the ring, and it's got some more. Got more hair. Now, I, so I know how many sections I'm going to do. I'm going to do six. So I will set my station up before I start so I can start placing them. Here's an example of the, the various ring sizes and the results you get. Um, what we've demonstrated on here is the vertical curl back in from the top to the bottom. And that's the ring size. If you look into the larger rings, it's a larger for the, the, the 
where the way starts and where the way ends is a longer section because it's gone around a better diameter or a wider diameter. Where do you get more kick? A small ring or a medium ring because it's gone around a lesser diameter. Fine tooth comb is easiest to use. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the elevation that Amy is going to use in a minute. Um, you're going to comb it smoothly and you're going to just twist it with your thumb. You're going to follow up with your forefinger inside of your forefinger. It's just thumb over thumb over thumb. And you're smoothing the back of it with your forefinger and in front of it with your thumb. You're going to leave the last inch to an inch and a quarter straight for that classic each way kick at the end of it. Okay, so everything he just covered, I'm going to now show. Make sure I have even moisture throughout. She was sitting in the back after she got to shampoo, so I'll just do a quick comb through so that the moisture that was starting in is even. Notice Ammon's elevation is close to 90 degrees. So the hair underneath is going to travel farther to the way. The hair on top is going to travel about as much. So what happens is there's going to be less wave underneath. There's going to be wave higher up on the head. In a classic wave, it's held at about a zero to five degrees, and it's grabbed up to land right at about the ear. So you've got about that signature three or four inches. And then you get a curl. With a 90 degree, you're going to have curl that starts higher, but you have less curl underneath, which is, which is fine. So, a little pro tip if you want those ends to make sure they're a little bit protected, just in case, you can put a little bit of a mask, a retail mask. It will still process, it's not a barrier, but. And now going back to where I was, you can talk yourself through Luther on If you can't see it, Larry, can you describe what I'm doing and then I'll recap it? What he's done is he's taken the notch in the ring and placed that under the base of the hair. And he's going to take that twist and wrap it around the circumference of the the ring. The end will lay because he's got the bond therapy mask on there. It'll lay a little flatter. Put that on there, then it will if it's not on there. Um, and then once that's in there nice and secure, he'll take the foam diffuser ring and put that right on top and then snap it shut. Now, what he's done is Oh, sorry. Is the foam diffuser always used no matter what? Always. Okay. Always. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about those too. Um, what he did was after he, he secured it, he turned it so the bottom is facing up because that's going to be an important portion of uh, the test curl because we're going to apply solution to that and that's what we're going to see our test curl. Um, so as you see, with a 90 degree elevation, that ring sits up higher in that section than the ring on this side, the ring on the, uh, on the model there. It's, not, it, it's higher, so that curls need to start smoother. So that trick that I did with the mask, that's not in the instructions. That's a pro tip for you guys. 
And it's also one that I want to share with you that you can use on the entire section if you do start working with in the blonde area of the hair where it looks like you can do it, but you're, it makes you nervous. Okay, it's going to, like I said, the processing times start to shorten when you go into the higher of the blonde. And so, um, but again, Sort of like a little, it'll, it'll give you a little, a little time, buy a right, little, little time. time. Yeah, we, um, we had a mannequin that was a null process platinum, and we took a pump and a half of the bond therapy mask on each side of her head, and we did it processed in two minutes. We did all small rings, and it was phenomenal. It was a, a condition to shine. It was, we couldn't, we were, we were waiting for it to fail. Even at a processing time of two minutes. Um, yeah, I'm all out. You know, um, but because you've got the bond therapy technology, you've got the, um, the ring, um, and we'll talk a little bit about this um, when, when we start processing. But I think the, the important part of this section is um, really just making sure that your, your twist is firm. And if you do it too firm, it'll buckle on itself. But kind of wrap around so you just don't do it quite that tightly. Um, there are a variety of different ways you can over direct this even more to start that wave higher. Um, what I recommend in that case, if you're really wanting the wave to start higher, use two sections because otherwise you're taking all that hair from down here, it's got to travel all the way up here, and it's got to be less. Work. So if you take two sections, you can still over direct it, not as much, and you get as much curl. Um, whatever, you know, in a classic beach wave, it's all away from the face. Um, I've got a, a, a great story that I had when um, we were doing all the R&D. I was only using the medium rings, and I just couldn't wait to get the, my hands on a smaller ring just to see what they could do. Uh, in December, we got the, the small rings, and I took a mannequin that was about 15 inches. Cut it to about 12 inches, um, used 13 small rings. It was one of those mannequins that you're surprised how much hair they have sometimes, mm -hmm. how much hair they don't have. And I used 13 rings, wrapped them all forward. And then when it was processed, I cut it into a, a shorter A line bob and then layered it. And all this curl just went forward. And it was just <laughs> the A line forced it forward, but it just, it was just the coolest. I just wanted to see what it looked like on short hair. And it was a blast. It was just a blast. Um, those are the kind of things you're going to have some fun with because it's going to be, it, it, it's really up to you on what you want to do with it. So, could you like curl some more of these days? Yeah, they'll, they'll get flexed. Yeah. But that's, you know, I mean, you, you've seen it with hairstyles where it's forward and it, it's going different directions. Um, we've done it where it's wrapped all in the same direction, okay. you know, just to see what kind of curl you can get from it. And leaving that, leaving enough of a, uh, some, some give to it so that when you're done, you can flip that ring over. That's going to be the important part of the uh, process. Well. And, um, this pan is doing a classic feature. Way. Here's some of the differences that we've done with um, the various ring or ring placements. Um, the one in the middle was just five. Um, and those were large rings, so you're just going to get a lot of body to that, you get a lot of grip, um, you're going to get some wave to it, but not the curl that you get from the medium or small. Um, model on the left was one we did in Dallas that was one of the finish looks you saw, that the three days or three days later and the five months later. Um, and then the model on the, on the right is four medium rings in the front, two on each side. And then I did, because she had a ton of hair, I used four medium plus because I needed a deeper well in that. And then we did two small on the bottom because I wanted some volume the hair to expand upon. So the hair would uh, come on the top of the on top of the, the volume from the smaller rings. And you saw that's so when we cut the head just to cascade the curls. One of the things you'll see if, if you've got hair that doesn't quite make the ring, that's okay. Um, one of the other things that you'll talk, we'll talk about is 
if you've got somebody whose hair is cut on an angle in the front, you may have to over, you may not be able to do the ring right in here because the hair in the front won't make it all the way over there. So I just over direct it and have it at the corner of her eye. It's really short, you can do it right at the right in the outer eye. I, I usually prefer to try to keep it at the corner of her eye at the farthest. You can over direct this hair so that this hair can make it. Alex on the left was a classic, and Amber was a custom. She's on the right. We used 10 rings on her hair and we used six rings on, on Alex's. Mm -hmm. Sometimes as you're twisting it, you'll have layers pop up, or if it buckles, you can just pinch it where the, where the buckle is and let the rest of it fall. Home it start right off. It's, um, it's very easy. If they're going to keep it on the side part, I would. I think you need to be an architect because your waves are going to, if you do a classic, the waves are going to start at different spots. So you may have to go higher up on the lighter side so that it matches the, right, the, the heavier side. So it's just a matter of looking at the, the perception and the, the, um, the balance. Um, and you might have to do two rings on the heavy side, just because one ring would, be, would suffice on this side. You may have to put a ring in here, a ring that, that lands here, like this side, and then one underneath that. Eamon, are you putting anything on the end? So this one in the back, I actually just barely decided after the, a lot of our shorter pieces were sticking out, I was struggling to keep it like wound tight. I just did a pump of the mask over the twisted hair. So there's just a layer like that's kind of very light layer that's keeping the hair together. It's not even saturated through all of the hair. So it's not keeping the, it's not the same amount as if I were to do like a full protection. It's just kind of keep the, the ends glued down long enough for me to get the ring on top of it because I want them to fall in line with that ring and not spin her off. Did you guys see me do that? I watched the guys comment. You're like pointing. Right. You're watching. It makes it like more control you kind of have. Over. Yeah, so I was able to put that on there. I know it'll process all so watch that, but I didn't necessarily was I wasn't planning on putting it on the ends because as I looked at the ends through here, the ends on this the front part were the ones that were dry and compromised. These ones didn't have that like the same light through the back, which is pretty common. Talk about on base and all base. Um, if you do off base or on base, you're going to have a different curl pattern that will start higher up on the head, but you'll have less volume on the knees. Um, by placing off base, you'll have a classic look to it. Were they um, all twisted back? Or is all twisted to the, the center back. On both sides? Yeah. Okay. Each side just back to back. And then would this restructure somebody's curl? Like if somebody has a curl already, would it restructure that? Like whether maybe make it looser or tighter in some spots? The question was with already wavy hair or curly hair, will it reconstruct their curl? Uh, one of the challenges, I'll, I'll address the curly hair question first. The, the challenge is, Keeping that hair, that curly hair, twisted and compressed, um, it's difficult. Um, we we don't recommend it at this point because we haven't tested enough. Wavy hair is another story. You can equalize the curl in someone's hair if it's wavy because you can get that hair wrapped and in the ring comfortably uh, and and still process it. You know it'll process quicker because it's, it's got some curl to it. But I think the, um, the most important thing is to remember um, if the hair will twist and stay in that twisted state, you're fine. Curly hair won't. It will always try to go back to curl. What about the frizz? Like a lot of people with curly hair have frizz. If it's frizzy, it's frizzy. Oh, it's not. You'll have some not. curl general, you'll have some curl consideration that will help tame some of that curl. But if there's frizz in the hair, it'll, you know, it's not going to make it worse, but it, it won't improve it. So, for people that get character to eliminate the frizz, can you still do this service on that? 
I haven't done it out of keratin, but Tammy has. I'm glad you talked about that. I'm about the best of working with um, mm -hmm. You, I have done it two weeks after and had amazing results. I just had to treat it as I was chemically treated here. So it, it processed for a similar amount of time as chemically treated hair, and the results were beautiful, both on the mannequin and on the live model, but two weeks after. I saw something with the well water. So where we live, we have, I have a couple clients that have well water there. What do you suggest not to form main service or? You can do like a demineralizing treatment. treatment. The question was in regards to well water and whether you can perform it or not. Um, I know there's some treatments out there that you can get the, the, the iron out of the hair. But keep in mind that the iron is going to the most porous portions of the hair, which is why you're seeing it um, on longer hair. That porosity is what you need to take into consideration when you're doing the color. Um, there's something keeping it in the hair. Whether there's going to be a reaction to that iron when the solution hits it or not, I don't know. But there's something keeping it in there. Um, it may dissipate and then turn a funky color when the process is pushed and goes on there. I don't but I, I think it's it's more about that the fact that the iron is staying in there, that orange is staying in there because it's both it's worse. And that's the key thing to making sure that you've got something to protect it. Yeah. Um, that's hair that I may want to go through the back with the bond therapy mask and just hit the ends of it so that it protects it. Might not even go away. You need to go up or raise size. Or is it mediums? I have some. Okay. Just so the section is actually too dense. So actually, no, what I'll do is split it. Okay. Someone asked if the solution is the same as a regular perm. The activator in Cali Pearl is a diode. The question is, um, is the activator like a perm solution? Um, the activator is a thiol based wave solution. Um, all considerations for any kind of wave solution that's thiol based should be taken into consideration. I think the most important part is that you've got bond therapy additives that help offer that. Um, but again, that's why you see some of the processing times that we have um, in being able to go in there with, again, a thiol based wave and get the results we have because of that bond therapy technology. So, Anna, when you added a session, was it was a session? It was too dense to fit inside the ring. Like okay. the entry of the ring when it's closing. The hair had to travel too far to get there. Or so. the, when it was there, the ring was still kind of popping open. Okay. Um. And the hair needs room to swap. So I can take smaller sections, make sure you're doing the same full tension. You mentioned um, doing, uh, I guess, a model with the large rings for more body. Um, I just use myself as an example. I have naturally wavy hair, but it's just on the end. So my top is very straight and flat, but the ends have curls. So it just doesn't work because it's just not pretty mm -hmm. <laughs> unless like, you, know, you blow it out. Um, one is, have you done just somebody maybe with like just a volumizing treatment versus like no curl? Have you tried that on anybody just kind of in like the crown area? The, the question was um, with an uneven curl pattern in your hair now, um, would uh, a body or I'm sorry, uh, a volumizing treatment help that? Um, absolutely. I, I think you're going to get a chance to have a curl on the ends or in the longer pieces is going to take um, a cali curl really well. Um, it probably the rest of your hair will as well. It's just a matter of evening that wave out. Okay. And then, so in that situation, 
like for the, the volumes that would use um, larger range, you wouldn't use smaller ones? Well, I look at the I look at the curl that I look at the back, the bottom dry natural, and see what kind of curls there. And if it looks like it's tighter than a larger ring, you go in with a, a, a medium ring okay. and get that all even out. I got a quick question for you. I know before you had mentioned something about not using it on metallic dots. Mm -hmm. Am I ready to think that metallic dyes are only in box color, or are there places where you could find metallic dyes that maybe people are unaware of? Good question. Um, it's in regards to metallic dyes and where you find metallic dyes. Um, and, and right now, I only know of metallic dyes in box waves. So I. I and a color has box waves? Henna color? I, I think some hennas do, but I I I, I don't see any in, in professional color at all. You know, so I, if a client comes in and they have box color on their hair, we should not be I, I wouldn't I wouldn't say no. I really that's gonna that's gonna spur a lot of questions to find out what they've been using on there. It happened, we don't know if it happened during COVID. You know, there are salons out there that were giving color formulas away so that they could color their hair at home and they wouldn't use box color. We ended up changing our entire consultation system to be able to add a 15 minute consultation before every color that came back after the uh, after the shutdown. So actually, way into the shutdown, we were open for almost a year and a half and there was some people coming in for the first time. So I think it's, it, it deepens the question and the consultation to what exactly and how far back have you been having chemicals done to your hair? And how far back would be okay, quote unquote, to do? Two years, a year, 18 months? I, I really go back about as far as they can go back, you know, nine months to a year. Okay. Um, it's going to, that stuff doesn't come off. Um, it gets cut off, but it, it's, it's a big question. That's right. Um, I, I would also take into consideration that when you're thinking about a color that has a metallic dye to it, Faria is actually a same brand that I have avoided for years. So that particular one does have metallic dyes in it. And also with henna, the challenge with that is that you are coating the hair. And because you've got henna coated on the hair, it's layer upon layer upon layer. To try to get through to the cortex layer and make a shape is next to the uh, Good. From my knowledge. Thank you. Thank you. I just ask if the client comfortable with the rings in her hair? Like, does she feel anything? You know, I'm curious. Oh, if, yes, well, do not feel like the weight of the ring. Okay. If the question was, how does it feel to you as a client? Um, I'm repeating for our friends on Zoom. Um, and she said that it's really, it's not tight. I did not feel that. Okay, it doesn't feel. Because sometimes when I do the traditional term, I think because because you're wrapping off base, um, one, you're not using as many tools right. in the hair. Um, you're wrapping it off base, so it's not super tight. Um, the twist is but it's not tight at the base. I think the um, and the fact that you're only doing six, seven, six to eight times makes a big difference. It makes much more comfortable mm -hmm. the client. And we'll talk a little bit more about this when it comes to processing, but you also um, understand that you have in a traditional perm rod, you've got hair wrapped around itself eight or nine times. And the process of getting that curl, that solution down to the base of that, takes a while. With a cali curl, you're twisting it, which is creating a curl, and you're laying it down flat. So as you put that ring on there, the foam fuser ring, and you put the um, you close the, the, the main ring, um, when you apply that solution, it penetrates a lot faster because it's not penetrating through six or seven layers of its own hair. So it, it, you're applying it, and it will begin to drip through the ring pretty quickly. The rings are perforated on both sides. Um, they're also top shelf dishwasher safe. They don't retain any of the smell. 
Um, they carry a little smell of this anyway. But they don't contain any of the chemicals in it. Um, they're dishwasher safe on the top rack. Uh, they'll last three to four years. Uh, the foam diffuser rings will last about four or five services. Um, I, I store, when I travel, I store my foam diffuser rings in the actual ring for the size. There's, there's three different, there's four different ring sizes, and there's three different foam diffuser ring sizes because the medium and medium plus are the same. But I, I store them in here once they're dry, and they keep their shape a little bit longer. I think a couple other good points to make on it are that the um, all of this is made in the USA, which is very important to Kevin, making sure that that was uh, something that he held as a really good value. There's also the fact that these come apart. And so if you were to drop them, they come apart, they snap back together pretty quickly. We just wanted to we just wanted to reiterate the um the rings do come apart um, and they snap on relatively quickly. And of course, it's going to do it on film, so it keeps them longer. But they snap right shut. Um, the rings and all of our products are made in the US. Uh, it was important to our CEO that we try to keep that as, as close to us as possible. The handling is ready, he's got um, the typical, it, it's the standard um, kit. Um, you've got an activator with a bond generator packet that goes with it. You've got a neutralizer with a second bond generator packet that goes with it. You have a bond extender, which is a large 50 mil pack of the condition that we use at the end of the service. And then you've got small um, navigator <coughs> bottles with the tips on them. And then a the set, set of instructions. Read the instructions. Don't skip steps. Let's talk about the processing chart. Once um, Ammon applies the solution, we'll talk a little bit about that. But I want to go through the processing chart so you know what to expect when you're doing these different types of hair. Everybody's hair is different. The processing time guide below is a it's a guide, not a rule, and you want to rely on your professional skill set, which is why we recommend it. Practice this a couple times on mannequins so you get used to what you're looking for. Because as we go to do a test curl on this, you're looking for something you've never seen before. And it's important, and it's, it, it's similar to what you've seen with an S pattern. But again, you want to make sure that you're comfortable with it when you're, when you're doing this. Um, there is um, a resistant and normal hair, which is non chemical treated hair. Um, you're going to look at a low end of a minute to six minutes up to 24 minutes for resistant hair. Um, we, do, we do split it up with, with colors and we're nothing against redheads. We kind of lump them in with the brunettes, um, which is probably an offender redhead, sorry. <laughs> um, but we've got, um, you're gonna process around, you can start checking in about four minutes for hair that's not kind of treated. Um, and every two minutes after that, again, as you see this process, and you see we, as how we apply this, it's going to make a big difference because you can see it really go through the hair, um, which hastens that uh, processing time. Um, on fine or porous hair, um, start checking in a minute, and then every two minutes after that, you're going to see it process relatively quickly because there's less hair, there's less substance to that hair when it's fine and porous. Um, compromised hair. Um, platinum, highly toned, any kind of um, human hair extensions are going to process very, very quickly. We don't recommend doing keeping the extensions in the hair when you're when you're processing them. Those have to come out and do and, and do those separately. They're going to process much faster than human or hair that's on the head. Um, anywhere from thirty to forty-five seconds will be pretty quick though. Um, and again, you're going to look at that, and you're going to apply it, and you're going to start checking it right away, um, which lends itself to the question, should I do this? If the hair is so porous, it's going to process in 30 seconds. Is it, is it the best decision to try to do that? Um, we want to give you enough of the information so that you can make that decision. Um, this isn't a panacea. This isn't a solution to everything. 
you've got to really consider that the condition of the hair, the porosity of the hair, the integrity of the hair, so that um, this chemical service can sustain itself. Um, processing ranges are not absolute. Everybody's hair is going to be different. Use your judgment. You're going to see some things that when you've you've twisted the ring and you, you put the hair in the ring and you turn it, you're going to apply solution to that inch to inch and a quarter above the ring. And then you're going to turn it over and apply it to the entire ring quickly to each one once and then continue to apply it around. Remember to turn that ring back over if you got your test curl. And then you're going to um, begin that processing as soon as you're done with the, the last frame. So Anna is going to start processing this. Something that I want to call out to everybody on the Zoom and everybody in the room, we would now take her back to the shampoo basin, but this is, on, this is the most important part for you to see. So we're going to do it here and have her gently tip her head back so it drips back onto these lovely mats. Um, and it also will help us kind of like prove our point. You know, I'll tell you when. Um, so we're going to start in the back and then work our way to the front. And then we'll check at the front and back since we were coding the back. And I just want to make sure, but usually the front ones process faster because that's usually where the hair is more porous. Um, what we're going to do, like you said, is I'm going to untwist so that I can make sure I get full saturation through that section above. This is where the test curl is going to be done. So about an inch above and then twice into the ring. And then switch it back to its processing position as quickly as you can, or you can do that afterwards. But just make sure you get the processing solution on all of them, and then you can position them back. This is where the I like actually placing the back of the ring so I can see where the hair is, and I don't lose. Sorry, sorry. So I notice he's not wearing gloves, but some people are super sensitive. To we recommend it. it is, it's sometimes it's state guidelines, sometimes it's your choice. Um, You're supposed to wear them. Depends on how well funded your state is. I've had my salon for 12 years, and no one's ever walked in from the state to check license. But in Illinois, and we're less corrupt. <laughs> Again, he's applying to an inch to an inch and a quarter above the ring. And then he's applying a quick circular once around, and then he'll go back and continue to apply it until he's done. You want to use the entire solution uh, for the benefit of the bond extender or the bond generator that's in there. That's why you want to use the entire bottle. Yeah. Okay, start timer. Got it. I got two minutes. Yeah. Two minutes. Two minutes. I got it. So even though I've started the timer, why am I finishing the rest of it? Right. So all the protective qualities that are mixed in there get evenly distributed all over the hair. That's the condition part. If I can keep adding, not making it process more, just ensuring that it's getting coated with all of the good stuff. Too. That's another part that when you practice, you start to like kind of gauge how much you need to use so that you go around about two times with each ring. Now, oh, here's an interesting thing, what do you smell? Yeah, it's not bad at all. And this is with the drain staying here. Usually it goes down the drain, right? It better not smell. <laughs> We're telling people it doesn't smell, but better not. <laughs> Plus. 
Yeah. Men will just get it. Jack is just taking a little sponge basket by the way we said it. I don't think it's going to be ready yet, but we'll check. Okay. So I'm going to lift it horizontally, right? Or like where we like elevate it from. And then I'm going to turn it. And if it wants to stay twisted and it starts to separate, that's actually really good. Now we also have textured hair, which gives it even more reason to. <laughs> let me just check a couple other ones. What you're looking for at this point is an S banner and separation. Right at the top of the ring. Um, Curious in this room, how many of you guys wrapped like a perm? This is not a perm, but like, how many of you guys remember unwrapped, like checking what a, when a perm is done, just at least with the same board or something? Yeah. So you I look for the, the same S shape okay. and that separation, it's going to give that same S shape. So if you haven't done one or it's been a long time, as you untwist it, the hair will want to stay in that twisted shape. It'll, 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 see this. It'll yeah, you can, you can definitely, this is the most important part to recognize. And at any time you want to refer to, if you're, if you're not sure if it's ready, if you can't recognize it, never exceed the time that's recommended on that area of hair. What do you see on there now, Amy? Right now I'm seeing it picking a little bit. This one actually, I need to elevate a little. Oh, I see it. Yeah. It's definitely close. It's been four minutes and 30 seconds now. This one really wants to be done. done. So at this point, you can like add another minute, add another minute. I tend to just kind of like rotate and just kind of see where everything stands. This one looks like it's ready. And that's one of the first ones you apply it to. Yeah. You, apply, you start from the back and then okay. what's the first That one looks pretty close to ready. So here we're at like just over five, five minutes. Yep. I'm going to give it a minute, which means it's going to take me a minute to walk it back to the shampoo bowl, or I'll have to rinse her. And I think we're going to be able to broadcast it on the screen so you guys can see what I do with the shampoo basin. Okay, come with me. Oh. And now we're going behind the curtain. Behind the curtain. So basically, what he's done is now that it's processed, he's gone through and done a flash rinse on each one of the rings and right above the, the ring just a quick stop action to flash it and to stop the stop the solution from processing and once he does that to all five or six of the rings he'll go back and rinse each one of them for at least a full minute at least a full minute it makes a huge difference it makes a huge difference when it comes to um the smells and the condition of it um He's going to, again, rinse a little bit above the ring, then he's going to hold it in his hand, he's going to flood that in his hand with as much water as he can. You're going to see some surfactant bubbles at first, just some sudsiness, and then I'll dissipate right away. And by the time you're done with the uh, full minute of rinsing, then it'll, all the bubbles will be clear. Does it matter if it's cool or hot water? Great question. Does it matter if it's cool or hot water? It's not hot water, it's not cold water, it's warm water. We're using warm water all the way up to um, the processing and rinsing of uh, the solution. And after this, we'll only use cool water. 
The warm water helps us get rid of any kind of um, ingredients that are in there, any kind of smell that's in there. Obviously, I mean, you just did it away and the room doesn't smell. So well. much better. I mean, you've, got, you've got some odor to it, but it'll dissipate when the time in the afternoon. So I think the, um, the next step is as we use cool water, just like we use cool water with, with color, it helps close the cuticle and it helps um, lock the curl in. Well, it's very similar to the traditional rinse and take it just in for four or five minutes. Like sure. sure. So, like, sometimes you can feel the hair, it's just so green. Right. And if you, if you hold the ring in your hand, you've got the, um, the whole of the ring in your hand, and it's, it's secure. You can take your whiz spray and just cover half of the hole, and it just floods the entire thing. That's what He's just really getting into it. Um, because, although it is off the scalp, I always make a point of rinsing the scalp as well. In case anything seeps through there, you've got a lot of liquid going on in there. Um, I, I rinse the scalp in there. That's cool how they spray it. I'm pretty sure that's it. I'm pretty sure it's where we as well. If during this process the ring gets heavy and falls out, that's okay. I don't panic. It's just a matter of getting your client up a little bit, uh, retwisting it, putting it in there, put the foam diffuser in there. If you want to, you can put a second one of the foam diffuser ring on top of that so it's a little more grip um, and it won't happen again. Basically, what Emma's going to do is, uh, in the earlier session, we called a lot of neutralize it out here. He's going to do it back there. Basically, what you're going to do is, whether it's a towel, paper towel, or micro towel, um, or a micro blend, you're going to hold the ring horizontally, open it up. The foam diffuser ring stays in there. You just get your fingers in there and you can push it in the direction, push it down. You're going to have water that will absorb onto the towel, but most of it will come out of the bottom of the Ring. You just push it in the direction that was twisted inside the ring. And this was in, in this case, it's clockwise. So basically, you push it out until he feels like there's enough of the moisture out of it. And you just close the ring. And he'll walk around and do each one of those, all five or six of them. So basically, what he just did was he he, he blotted the area above the ring where the test curl was done, and then he opened the ring, and now he's blotting the outside to the inside. On the smaller rings, I find being able to take an edge of the towel and push it in there. It's easier because I can get my fingers and a piece of onto the towel in the small rings. The medium, medium plus, and the large rings are easier to get the towels in there. But on the small ones, I take the edge of the towel and just push it in there. It's even easier if you're using any kind of a paper towel or some of the easy dry towels. Um, it's just not as thick as a hair cloth. What he's also doing is um, because of the manipulations and the swelling of the hair that the hair has gone through at this point. He's going to make sure that none of the hair is peeking out of the, the foam diffuser ring. You just get in there with the tail foam and put that, push that back in.
you get used to it because as you as you open the ring, if you pull it away, it comes out of the comes out of the ring. Notice how close he is to the head. He's got it right up against your head, so it doesn't it doesn't manipulate at all. Well, I guess it really it's a matter of getting comfortable with the procedure of this whole Sure. I have a feeling he made it look easier than like it, it may it, take some time to get to that. It's I, I think I said it before, you you'll spend more time setting up your sections, making sure that they're in need and density, because once you get used to the thumb over forefinger, and it's just it, it's it's, it's a manual dexterity. Yeah, it's, it's just getting used to what am I doing and how does it fit right. um, Plus, it's like, okay, I got this. Where do I take the entire packet? It's the second packet of the bond. Rip off the top of that and put the entire contents in the neutralizer and then shake that until it's creamy. And again, you'll apply it to the top of the ring for the hair process and the. the um, that's where it was, and then he'll apply it once around each ring, and then he'll go back and apply the rest of it and just continue until it's gone. So, in other words, what you just saw me do in terms of application, you're doing the exact same thing with the neutralizer. Generator packet goes entire contents in, shake it. I'm going to apply the exact same way, and as a standard set timing of six minutes once I saturated the last one, then I'll continue until it's gone. So the standard six minutes gives us time for questions because you guys can watch this while I'm applying it, but you've already seen it once. I do have a question. Um, if hair, sometimes in the traditional terms, the hair is really thick and holding a lot of the water and the solution. Could you put them on the dryer to make sure they're was um, can you let it air dry or um, use the dryer to dry the hair before um, before neutralizing on um, wet heavy dense hair that's been in the norm um, what we recommend is to not use a dryer um, only because I've seen it where it dries the outside and not the inside so you have to across and then you throw a neutralizer on it. Um, I would because it would be surprised how easy these towel block because you don't have a ring involved and you don't have hair over hair over hair over hair. Uh, yeah. um, yeah, we this blocks really easily and you can get rid of the moisture very, very efficiently. Thank you. Yes. So after all this, like you have to wait a couple of days to wash her hair or we'll she... wash it today. Okay, so she's good after that, but she doesn't have to wait 72 hours no. or 48 hours. No, no chances are, are chances are she'll let it go natural. Right, for a couple days. Refresh it every morning. You had another question? So she could wash it tomorrow. If she wanted to, sure. I always find people with color. Like, I always tell my clients to wait two days to wash it yes. anyway, because it's like fully set, I tell them. It's so right. kind of like it same thing, it's like better, yeah. like, okay. wait longer to wash And in it. those three days, the take home products that we recommend for like guaranteeing it. They have the same patented technology, so the, the bonds get stronger, the, the cuticle closes. That's another question. Um, you know, some clients you recommend product that goes with it, like for example, when we do a heritage treatment, we you know we want you to use the shampoo products that go with it. It's I just want to be, you know, um, can they use any shampoo? Or do they have to use what? I mean, obviously, we want them to use both those two products, but is it going to harm their results if they use a different sulfite through shampoo, say? Or right. The, um, the question was should she be using a take home product, the products that are, are um, with the line? Um, we always recommend it because the bond therapy technology that is in the generators. The back of the generator and in the extender are also in the products we have. So, anytime you use that, it's going to always benefit the condition of it. 
Um, we talked earlier in an earlier session about bundling product, take home product with the service. So instead of saying maybe you're going to charge $300 uh -huh. for this, you charge $375 and you get a shampoo or conditioner to $375. We, we love bundling in my salon because the staff likes it because it's easier to sell retail, recommend retail. Uh, they can commission on that retail, um, but it also it maintains the integrity of that hair when it's at home. Yeah, so it's the same concept where we do the charity, we get the shampoo and conditioner with the service, mm -hmm. you know, we include it. Um, so basically, that's we'll say the client, the guarantee that you have the longer list and results with this mm -hmm. product, we recommend you take home more. Exactly. Okay, thanks. Yes. So with charging now, what do you charge for this? Some of the some of the, the, the market studies that we did get about 15 different salon owners of, of uh, in various parts of the country just wanted to test with a couple with a few dozen um, salon owners. Um, in in the urban areas, in the, the major cities, they were going 300, 300 plus for the service. Suburbs were 2.5 plus, and then in the rural areas, like 175. Again, if you've got to look at what your business can handle, um, the, the wave of itself is $30. Um, if you're charging 300, it's a 10% plus of goods, which is what you're going to try to stay around when you're in your operations. Um, the, the return on the investment is considerable if you charge $300 for it, and it only costs you 30 um, we've, um, and again, it's what the market will bear. Yeah, and, and the ease of styling their hair, they don't mm -hmm. have to fight with the curling iron every day. It's, yeah. it's worth the investment. Oh, so for them, it's going to be like the type of hair that they've never been able to have. They'll be like, and it lasts this long. Yeah, they're like, oh my gosh, yeah. it's like, worth it. Like, they're like, I've wanted, it, I wanted to be able to do this with my hair my whole life, and now for this, yeah. yeah. The next step he's going to do is he's going to open each ring and let the ring drop and let the hair fall. Technology. What he'll do is he'll he'll open each ring, take the phone with you as a ring out. There it is. There it is. You can see the coil. It's like a it's like a dreadlock. Now he, he neutralized her for a full six minutes and now he's um, taking the rings out. So after you um, finish with the client, how do you recommend the way you said the kids want to stay? You know, in the salon, how would we wash them after the client took you to home? I put a plug in the sink. Put a little bit of clarifying shampoo in there, yes. suds them off and let them soak, and then rinse them off. And rinse them off. That's, yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. Um, so, what I am going to do now is now that the rings have been dropped, he's going to be very, very careful. He's going to hold that hair up and rinse it with cool water, starting on the scalp. You just hold that hair up so that it's not heavy and wet. He just wants to make sure that he gets as much of that, all of that neutralizer out. He's going to use cool water at this point. That's going to help seal the cuticle a little bit more. You could use like a lower pressure, maybe. Always use a lower pressure at this point because you really, if the hairs, you know, although you neutralize it, it is still in a fragile state. You want to make sure you're as gentle with it as you can be. And what will happen is you'll rinse that really well. No. And he'll come out here and then we'll start to talk about the machine. So here's a side story. About four weeks ago, I, I got approached by Disney to use my salon as 
a scene for a show that she Wow. Um, and so Friday, it, we, we didn't open until two o'clock and they painted walls in my salon. They changed all the signage. So it now says she has a beauty bar. Um, they put a pricing sheet up there, a pricing poster up there. It was like, she got rid of the She's on that chart. Um, they took down all our beta signs. Um, they turned all of our product around. They painted three walls. They pulled a chair up off the floor. All my floors, my chairs are both different floors. They pulled them up, one of them up, so they could figure out how to change it. Today, there are, from what they texted me, there's seven full semis in front of my salon for a four minute scene. Oh they're they're oh literally goodness. there from five, my manager was there from five o'clock this morning. She's there until three or four this afternoon. They'll shoot the scene, they'll get it all done, and then tomorrow we don't open it until two o'clock because they gotta restore it. Wow. They, gotta put everything back. Back. they said we're gonna paint that the wall's about that big. We're gonna paint it blue. If you like it, it's yours. If not, we are you painting? So they painted it on Friday. I went, I love they warmed the whole room up and uh, we kept it. Wow, yeah, show right. Is it? So and then they, they see, what show is it? Yeah. It's it's a it's a coming of age show. Um, it's African American based, and it's a roller skating show called Saturdays. Oh, and this is a scene where the, the, the producer is from Blackish, and one of the stars is one of the kids from Blackish, and they came into um, they're they're shooting at a local roller rink. It's not like a half a million dollars to do in roller rink, and they they Google. They Google high end salons, they found mine. They came up with a price to rent it, you know, for those two and a half days. Not bad. They they paid staff fee, they they paid to comp all the move the move appointments, they paid to my staff's commission on the move appointments and my staff's commission on the redo appointments. Plus they paid me the fee to do it. That's pretty good. And I countered with one offer. They gave me one offer. I counted with it and signed it right away. I was like, yeah, sure, that's <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have to watch out for that. Ooh, yeah, it's called Saturday. Saturday. So, what Evan's done now is he's gotten that, he's gotten all the neutralizer out of there. Um, he's going to scrunch as much of that moisture out as he can. Um, Emma, are you coming out here to put in the bond extender? Yeah. Okay. He's going to come out here. We're going to do the bond extender out there. Um, the bond extender is. The largest of the three packs in here, it's 50 mils. So the bond generator will be on there for about 10 minutes because her hair is relatively healthy. Um, and then what he'll do is we'll rinse it with cool water. We'll do a light shampoo with the protein, with the hydrating shampoo, and a light conditioner with the protein and the conditioner. And we're done. We're All right, so I heard him talk about it. Now you're seeing it, the bond extender packet. Doesn't have a fancy spigot or spout. <laughs> Want to make sure you apply this generously. It's the largest packet. It does. And this is the good stuff. You want to make sure that all of the hair receives some of this. I like to start where I know I applied the like the entry point of the ring. Make sure all that hair, because sometimes it gets bottled up into the entry point when it swells. So make sure that that's good and saturated. And then I'll put it through and I can comb it through gently. Once I have it all the way through. As soon as it's combed through, I'm going to scrunch and squish it. You should start to see pro formation in like big chunks. This one, you do not want to skip this step. This is going to make the hair feel incredible. And it's a minimum of 10 minutes. For over like for compromised hair, you can put it on for longer, but it's been on longer if you can. Yeah. 
have the time. And it helps seal the hair because it warms the trunks. first in the same way that we were rinsing and then I shampooed by taking the shampoo just scrunching and then rinse that the same way then I conditioned combed the conditioner through rinse the conditioner out and then I scrunched it to this point now I'm going to use our bond therapy mist which when you spray it on the hair while it's wet it offers a little bit of detangle so that I can put her heart in and her hair at actually natural fall and now I'll follow that up with a scrunch. The hair is still really wet. <laughs> See how nice that um, comes through? That's a good sign, right?
So you want to be able to give them options where they can either air dry or they can diffuse. So if they air dry, I personally don't like, love to let them air dry in the salon because I like to know that the hair is dry, and it's curly, and the way that they touch it is if they don't stretch it, it will air dry straight. Um, and it'll, when they re-wet it, it'll reactivate, but they won't know that, and they'll think it just fell out. Um, also like that, home care is much easier if you style it with that intact, and then they take care of it well. So now as if I'm wearing, I put like, this is called our um, anti-flyaway serum. I like to put a lot of it in while the hair is really damp. And this will start to, as you like put it in, this will start to create like a cast or create like sections that clump together. And you can kind of keep squeezing hard and then release as well. Now those sections, when they air dry, or when they air dry, they'll stay at least that way. When they, or they'll shrink up like Larry just showed you, or when you diffuse them, you can get a lot of volume. I think he showed you a couple options. Yeah, the, the one that I need that was cast on, the entire head was cast on, just started scrunching the right side and watching that curl start to explode and release. Casting it when it's like very, very wet. Um, it keeps that moisture in there. It takes considerably, long, considerably longer to dry, but it, it, it's amazing what it does to the curl and to the condition of the hair. And that's why that hair is so soft. One of the reasons why it's so soft is because you just go ahead and start blowing it out. You just let the natural moisture in there and you trap it with the uh, violets. So now she can style one way. I like to have her diffuse to teach them how to diffuse it if they don't even know how to scrunch their hair, right? So you teach them how to scrunch it, teach them that for the first three days. In fact, Larry, if you want to like start, I'll, I'll kind of show them. You guys can pull your chair up closer. So what you, you're going to do, you've probably done your hair a lot, a lot of times, but um, we're going to start off with your just to the side. We're not going to actually touch it with the diffuser, just sit down. So. And I'm just going to go ahead and like diffuse without touching. So that this kind of it stiffens. Does it dry that cap? Yeah. So it's different by drying that, that, that cast here. The, the serum has like a little bit of fold. Now it softens as soon as you stretch it. So that's like the last few things we're going to do is start to rotate her hair so it has some volume. Once this has got enough dryness that they'll stay together while she starts moving her head, then you can work towards the root area while her head is upside down. But even this, I can get under and around the side by her head hanging to the side. 